Go Chiefs, Kansas City Chiefs, 116 plus 116 net points. Brain trust includes head coach Andy Reid, offensive coordinator Eric Bieniemy, defensive coordinator Steve Spagnuola, often assistant head coach. That's what AHC. He's listed as the assistant head coach and special teams coordinator David Tao, and quarterback Patrick Mahomes. So that's a power pack group right there. Yes, it is. It's proven itself to be power packed from Patrick Mahomes on up for the last few seasons. Very well built, very well coached team. Explosive offensively. Hopefully for them, they uh, plan to continue to be explosive on offense. And hopefully Brett Veach as the GM can get that defense together to match their offensive prowess. Uh, Brett Veach has worked as a coaching intern and coach's assistant and a scout for the Eagles from 2004 to 2012. All that time he spent as an intern and as a coaching assistant was under Andy Reid. He went with Andy Reid to the Chiefs in 2013 as a player personnel assistant and then the director of player personnel. And he was named the general manager in 2017. Head coach Andy Reid, well known here in Philadelphia, started out with a 10 year college career as an offensive line coach. So for 10 years, mostly on the D1 level, uh, some on the, um, I, I don't wanna call it D2, maybe like mid major level. I didn't look at every single team or write down every single team that he coached for, but he's a long time offensive line coach in college. He started his pro career with the Packers in 1992 under Mike Holmgren as the offensive line and tight end coach. So he comes from the Mike Holmgren tree of coaching. And we know Mike Holmgren came from the Bill Walsh coaching tree. So nice little tree there for Andy Reid. Hey, Ben. And, yes. I like to think that Andy Reid started his pro career at the punt, pass, and kick competition where he was oh, every kid that was out there. <laughs> He's the biggest, fattest kid out there. <laughs> he looked like a pro compared to him other kids. I'm telling you. Uh, <laughs> and, that's still one of the most amazing things to see when you just see him standing in line with those other kids, man. I'm <laughs> telling you. That is an amazing thing. All right, so we had 1997, 1998 season. He became the quarterback coach and assistant head coach. He was hired as head coach of the Eagles in 1991 and stayed there till 2012. He was fired and then hired as the head coach of the Chiefs in 2013 and won the Super Bowl, won Super Bowl 54 against the 49ers and lost Super Bowl 55 to the Buccaneers. So two Super Bowl appearances there. Also had a Super Bowl appearance with the Eagles that they lost to the Raiders, I believe, back some years ago. Yeah. Offensive coordinator Eric Bieniemy played running back for the Chargers, Bengals, and the Eagles. Wonder how many Eagles fans out there remember Eric Bieniemy being on the Eagles. His pro coaching career started with the Vikings as a running back coach from 2006 to 2009. He took over the OC job at his alma mater, University of Colorado, back in 2011 and 2012. So here's another guy who had a, a coaching career in the pros, then went back to college, then came back to the pros and was hired as a running back coach for the Chiefs in 2013, and then became the offensive coordinator in 2018. Now, let me just say something about Eric Bieniemy that I just saw recently. Um, Who's the running back? Um, the running back for the Steelers that went to the Chiefs. Uh, oh, yeah, I know what he's talking about. Oh, I'm talking about. He made a statement about Eric Bieniemy not being hired as a head coach by another team. He says some disparaging things about Eric Bieniemy as far as how he relates to players. I've never heard this before. And I never heard it mentioned by any other player. I don't remember anybody else saying anything about it. 
So I'll keep my eyes open for that. But it has been pretty curious even to us over the couple of, last couple of years, how coaches are being hired and that the enemy being so successful, a coach with such a successful team, his name comes up every time for interviews, but he never gets selected. That's something to watch for in the future. Defensive coordinator, Steve Spagnola. I like Steve Spagnola. He was a defensive coordinator for my team, the Giants. Extensive coaching career as a defensive assistant, position coach, and a DC in college. And he also coached in NFL Europe before entering the NFL coaching ranks in 1999 with the Eagles. He was with the Eagles until 2006 as a DB and linebacker coach. He was hired by the Giants as defensive coordinator in 2006 and became head coach of the Rams and worked there from 2009 to 2011. After he was fired from that job, he became a defensive assistant and position coach with the Ravens before joining the Giants again as defensive coordinator in 2015. He became defensive coordinator for the Chiefs in 2019. And of course, you know, can't say enough about Patrick Mahomes. So the job now is keep Patrick Mahomes on his feet and do some additions to that defense so that they can hang in there with their high scoring offense. Well, let's take a look at their roster reset, but let me mention the name that we both were struggling with one LaShawn McCoy. Oh, it was LaShawn McCoy, right. For some reason I was thinking it was, yes, LaShawn McCoy is the one that did that. Shady said that. Shady said some shady stuff. <laughs> shady threw some shade. He's throwing shades. Well, they've had some ad, ads and losses. And I see a big loss. I'll let you handle it, though. OK. Uh, let's see. Who do I think you're considering as the biggest loss? <laughs> let me see. Could it be the? The, the uh, Badger. <laughs> <laughs> it, <laughs> any other time, it probably would be the Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew, who is a big loss. He's going home to New Orleans to be with the Saints. But I'm pretty sure the biggest loss for them is going to be the Cheetah, Tyreek Hill, going to the Dolphins. They're going to miss him. Uh, Charvarius Ward was a pretty decent cornerback. He'll probably be missed, too. Um, but he's going over to your team, the 49ers. Shavarius, come on down. Yeah, come on down, right. Biggest losses. Oh, yeah, we already talked about biggest additions. Uh, Justin Reed at safety. Marquez Valdez Scantling coming over from Green Bay. Juju Smith Schuster. Now, they'll all be additions, and I'm going to consider them, in my opinion, big additions because. Besides Tyreek Hill, I was never really impressed with the Chiefs wide receiver core. I believe, although Schuster and Scantling are not number ones where they're coming from, they are improvements over the wide receiver core that the Chiefs <laughs> previously had. Okay. That's the way I look at it. So I'm going to consider them big additions. Uh, draft wise, ooh, Trent McDuffie, a real nice addition to their defense as they're trying to shore up their defense. He's a cornerback out of Washington, one of the top cornerbacks in this week's, uh, this year's draft. <clears throat> George Karlaftis is a defensive end pass rusher from Purdue, also a top guy in this past draft, as far as that position is concerned. And Sky Moore, a wide receiver out of Western Michigan. Heard a lot of great things about Sky Moore. He showed that at the combine, and I think this guy is going to be really nice. Sky Moore is a wide receiver to keep your eyes on. I'm not going to say he's going to be the next Jamar Chase, okay? But Sky Moore is going to be a factor, especially playing with Patrick Mahomes. All right, all right. Sky Moore. With a name yeah. like Sky Moore. Great name, right? Great name for a wide receiver. I'm telling you. I'm